Hello boys and girls, this is Mrs. Stone, and this is your very first history lesson um, with me talking and you listening and doing your paper. So what you need to make sure you have in front of you, you need to make sure you have your pencil and you also need to make sure that you have the pages that were listed on your assignment sheet before you start. Now, as um, I get to going on this, I have a tendency to go long. Hopefully it'll still be pretty interesting. Um, but I have a 15 minute timer on this program that I am using. And so we're going to try to get used to it. But always, if it seems like I get cut off, then you need to go to RenWeb and look for a part two on something. It may not be listed on your assignment sheet because if I haven't recorded this bef before I did your assignment sheet, then I don't know that I need a part two until after I record it. So if for some reason it cuts off, you go to the run web, you always look for a part two if it seems like I didn't get through the PowerPoint or through your worksheets. All right. So what we're going to talk to about today is we're going to talk about the French and Indian War. And the French and Indian War is probably a war that a lot of you have not heard of, just kind of like the War of 1812. That was a important war, but people don't uh, remember it. But the French and Indian War was kind of the same way. At this point in time in history, okay, we are not Americans. We still belong to the British. We belong to, uh, we live in colonies that were set up by the British government. Um, they were owned by the British and it all has to do with the explorers of Henry Hudson and different um, European explorers and stuff. But what happened was when the explorers came over, all right, they all landed kind of in the same area. They planted their flag and they said, I proclaim this area and all surrounding areas. And then they would proclaim it for their country. Well, the problem was, what happens if somebody else landed 50 miles down the beach and did the exact same thing? And so during this period of time, there was a lot of dispute over who owned what land. But the um, British established colonies, there were 13 of them. And that has to do with your map and stuff that um, that we will talk about and stuff. But there were 13 colonies. The land that we're talking about right now that is being going to be fought over during the French and Indian War is the land that is going to be to the west over the Appalachian Mountains. Um, and what happened was the French decided to claim that land. The British decided to claim that land. And so they had this big dispute on who owned it. All right. And we're going to go through things. But basically what happened was the French started to build forts on there. The British didn't like that. Okay. And so the French mainly got the Indians on their side because they like to trade with the Indians and they were fair to the Indians and stuff like that, whereas the Indians, the Native Americans, saw that the British were just kind of uh, taking over land, that they were they were afraid that the British would eventually take their land away from them. All right, so that was kind of the whole big, huge basis of the war. Now, the important thing is what happened as a result of this war. We're going to see how this war was a direct cause of the Revolutionary War. It was one of the causes that caused the future Revolutionary War against the British. And we became the United States of America, but that's a while down the road. All right, so you've got your paper in front of you. We're going to talk about the French and Indian War. So if I go too fast during PowerPoints, the cool thing about me doing it is that you can always pause the video all right, and you can always stop, take your notes, and then start my voice back up and keep going. And so that's the really cool thing is that you, I never really get too far ahead of you because you can always stop the video. All right. What was the French and Indian war? The French and Indian war was a war fought between the countries of Britain, France, Spain, and groups of English colonists and native American tribes. The French and Indian war is sometimes also called the seven years war and the war of conquest. The French and Indian war began in 1754 and ended in 1763. So, for all of you math people out there, if you take 1754 and you subtract it from 1763, you know what you get? You get nine. I'm not really sure why they call it the Seven Years War when it lasted for nine years, but we'll go with it. All right. So, 
basically you have to remember, and this is what kind of gets people confused a lot. The French and Indian War, okay, is basically telling you who the British and the Ameri the English colonists, okay, I'm going to call them the American colonists. We're still not Americans because we're still colonists, all right, who they fought, all right? So you, it's kind of like if you think about a team, all right? On one side, you've got the French and you've got the Native Americans. On the other side, you have the colonists and the British. So that's kind of our teams during the French and the Indian War. All right, how did the French and Indian War start? If you look at that map, all right, that they show you, that arrow and pointing to that the magnifying glass, that's the disputed land right there. It's called the Ohio River Valley, and it is west of the Appalachian Mountains. And both the British and the French were claiming that land. So France and Britain both believed that they alone had claimed to the fertile stretch land called the Ohio River Valley. The land was important to France because it connected their land in New Orleans, Okay, New Orleans is south. New Orleans is, see that really, really lime greeny color on that map? And the very, very, very bottom, all right, that is the New Orleans area. Okay, so they can, they thought it connected their land in New Orleans to their colonies of what well, now Canada. So the French had possession, which is going to change after the French and Indian War, hint on who wins, but the French had Canada. They had that lime green part that you see on the map, okay, and it connected all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. And so they had basically control of the Mississippi River, right? Britain needed the land to expand their growing colonies in North America. At this time, okay, we start out with Jamestown and we start out with Plymouth and we start out with all the little kind. Well, it just kept growing and growing and growing. And so colonists, okay, just like the American spirit that we have now, is we want to expand. We want to explore. Okay, so this is where the whole westward movement began. So the colonies started getting a little bit crowded, and so people wanted to move farther and farther west over the Appalachian Mountains, all right, and this is where the conflict started. Each country thought that they had the right to settle the land and that the other should stay away. Okay, so let's talk about what an ally is. An ally is a friend or partner who helps or assists with the cause, all right? So right now, the Americans, the United States of America, we have several allies in the world. Britain is crazy world, guys, but Britain at this time is one of our strongest allies. We're, right now, we're going to be talking about fighting against them in order to gain our freedom. Okay, at this time, we are allies with the French. We're allies with the English were allies with the Germans. Okay, that means that um, we're partners with them. All right. So it says during the French and Indian War, alliances, okay, those are allies or partnerships between allies were very important in fighting the war. Both the British and the French made alliances with Native American tribes living in and around the Ohio River Valley. All right. And the reason why they do this is because trade at this time Fur trade was huge because the England or the Europeans, okay, they loved like beaver skin and all that kind of stuff. And so the French were heavy into trapping, which means um, trapping animals. And then you would take them, uh, take their fur and sell the fur. And so they would wear these hats called beaver, oh, beaver something hats. I can't remember what they're called. But anyway, um, you had... Um, all different kinds. You remember the pictures of Davy Crockett and stuff? He's got that coon skin cap and it's got the, the tail on it and stuff like that. So at this time, animal hides were very profitable. Profitable means worth a lot of money. All right. So if we go down, who were the allies with the British during the war? Britain knew that they would need help to defeat the French forces in the French and Indian War. Britain made formal alliances with Native American tribes in North America, including the tribes belonging to the Iroquois, it's a funny looking word, but it's Iroquois Confederacy, the Mohawk, the Oneida, Cherokee, and others, okay? Cherokee you might recognize because that's the Indian tribes that live in our area. The tribes agreed to help the colonial army and British army to fight against the French and their allies. 
It was a big decision for the tribes to side with the British. If they lost, the tribes would be punished and even lose their land if the French won the war. All right. So this is making it sound like um, a, it was kind of one of those deals where there was not like one united um, group of Native Americans. And so it was basically this tribe went with the French, this tribe went with the British, and it was kind of all depending on who made them better promises on which side they decided to stay with. All right, now, who were allies with the French during the war? So on the English side, we have the British. British and English mean the same thing. So when I use those terms, those mean the exact same thing. All right, so the British had the American colonists and some Native American tribes on their side. It says, the French had a good trading relationship with many of the tribes in North America. The Ottawa, Shawnee, Lunup, I'm not sure about the pronunciation of that, and many other tribes allied themselves with the French. More Native American tribes wanted to side with the French instead of the British because they had been trading partners with the French for a long time. So it was very profitable. It made a lot of people a lot of money. The French traded furs, weapons, and other important goods with the Native American tribes. All right, so a lot of times, the Native Americans were always fighting with other Native American tribes, all right? Not necessarily of their own um, like name. Like the Cherokees wouldn't necessarily fight with the Cherokees. They would fight a different type of tribe. And so what would happen is they would kill animals for their fur, okay? They would trade with the French for weapons. And so then they could use those weapons. Whoever had the most powerful weapons were the ones who usually won, all right? So what was the Albany plan? We're kind of skipping here, but this is also very important to the French and Indian War. What was the Albany plan? Benjamin Franklin came up with a plan to unite the 13 colonies. Franklin presented this plan in a meeting of colonial representatives held in Albany, New York, okay, in June to July of 1754. Although parts of the plan would later be used when drafting the Constitution, the Albany plan was not approached by the delegate was not approved by the delegates at the meeting in 1754. And so um, one of the very first political cartoons okay, was created by Benjamin Franklin, and it talked about unite or die, and so they were talking about this Albany plan, where Benjamin Franklin basically said, hey, we got to stick together, or we're going to lose, but the Albany plan was not passed, and um, it became hard times. All right, so let's talk about Fort Necessity. All right, Fort Necessity, in 1754, a young 21-year-old British soldier named George Washington was sent to reclaim the Ohio River Valley from the French. All right, they were building a fort, Fort Necessity. Um, they were they were getting ready to build um, a fort and do all kinds of and so they sent George Washington out there and he built this fort called Fort Necessity because necessity is we need it now. So that's kind of the way it was looked at. All right. Washington, along with 150 troops from Virginia Colony, came upon a camp of French troops and attacked. The scuffle ended in a small victory for Washington and his men. Because there were more French soldiers nearby, Washington and his men built a stronghold for the protection called Fort Necessity. By July 3rd, 1754, however, the fort was attacked and overtaken by the French and their Native American allies. But we know that Washington wasn't harmed or killed because he became very important in the Revolutionary War Movement and to the um, American cause. All right. So let's go to what was the Treaty of Paris. This is the end of the war. This happens after the British and the American colonists won the war. Okay. They want it. And so a treaty is a piece of paper that is signed um, ending the war. It talks about what you agreed to, what the terms and everything were. All right. So I see that my time is almost up. So you are going to have to look for a part two.